In this episode, we're going to integrate Stripe payments into an Angular 4 project with Firebase on the back end. This is the first installment of a multi-part series on handling payments in Angular. In this first part, you'll learn how to trigger the Stripe checkout modal to collect the customer's credit card and then receive the payment token back from Stripe. Before we get into the code, let's take a look at how the whole Stripe payment process works. The user will enter their credit card details through the Angular app with Stripe checkout. Then Stripe will respond with the payment token, which we then want to save in the Firebase database. This will automatically trigger a cloud function, which sends the token back to Stripe. Stripe will charge the card and then respond with the charge details. Firebase and Angular have a real-time connection, so the user will always stay up to date on the status of their payment throughout this process. Let's start by getting the initial setup out of the way. First, you'll need a Stripe API key, which you can get from stripe.com. Then go to the checkout documentation, and we'll be modifying the custom integration to work with Angular. In your app environment file, add the Stripe API key, and make sure it's the test key. From there, we need to add the Stripe checkout library to the index.html file. And the final step is to make TypeScript aware of the Stripe checkout class, which you do in the typings.d.ts file. The next step is to create a feature module to handle all of our payment components and services. When you're done with this lesson, your payment module should look something like this. From there, we can generate the service specifying the payment module, then import Angular Fire database and Angular Fire auth. And first, we'll get the user ID by subscribing to the Angular Fire auth state. The only other thing our service needs to do at this point is save the Stripe token to the Firebase database. The payment object will just be the Stripe token, as well as the amount that we want to charge the customer. Let's take a look at how this data is actually structured in the database. Every payment is nested under its associated user ID. The payment object has an amount, which is just a number, and the token and charge properties are objects that are returned from Stripe. They contain all kinds of useful information that we'll see later in this lesson. Now we can start building the component that will trigger the Stripe checkout window. We'll use the host listener decorator and we'll also want to inject the payment service into the component. And we'll need the environment variable with our Stripe API key. We set variables for the handler, which is the Stripe checkout object, and also the amount, which we'll just hard code to 500. 500 is equal to $5 in Stripe. Everything's counted as 1 100th of the underlying currency. The handler is defined during ng on init, and we define a few properties in there, including the Stripe API key, as well as a default logo image. But the most important part is the token property, which is a function that we can use to handle the token when it's sent back to us from Stripe. In this case, we send it back to the service to update it in the database. The next function is just an event handler that you can attach to a button click, and this will actually trigger the Stripe window to pop up. The last step is to use host listener to listen for the window pop state event. This will happen if the route redirects or if the user clicks the back button. So if you redirect to a confirmation page, you'll definitely want to implement this function. Let's go back into the app and make sure it's working. Using a test credit card from Stripe, we can send a test request to the API. Once the charge is complete, we should see the database updated with the token details. The most important part here is the token ID, which we'll send back to Stripe from our backend to actually charge the card. So it's important to note at this point that the card hasn't actually been charged, we just have a token that we can use to charge it on the back end. In the next part of this series, we'll go over how to actually charge the card with Firebase Cloud functions. That's it for part one. If this video helped you, please subscribe. And if you're serious about Stripe payments, I recommend getting a pro subscription at angularfirebase.com. You'll get exclusive content related to Angular, Stripe, and Firebase, as well as access to our pro channel on Slack for one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in part two.